Hi, my name is Dorothy and I'm going to take you through our election template and the radar chart. Um, this is for Instant Atlas version 6.3.0. And to get started, let's have a look at Nottingshire. So this is a fictional election result and we can see quite quickly, um, based on the colors, uh, if you're familiar with the different kind of colors that are used in party um, for parties, uh, you can see that the blue is going to be representing the conservatives in this particular example, the red is going to be um, Labour, and the yellow is going to be Lib Dem. So it's quite simple to see that very quickly. This is at ward level data. So we can actually then look at what each individual ward is doing. And that's the real advantage of using this particular uh, template because we can see, we can break down the results very quickly just by clicking on an area and see who it was that won how many votes do they get. Um, we can also have a look at the overall results of the election up here. Um, this particular chart here does not change. Um, it just tells you the overall results um, and it tells you the percentage, the total votes, the number of seats that were up and the different parties that ran. And it can be as detailed as you like. Um, and depending on how many people have run in a particular area and how many seats were up for grabs, you can represent that very easily in the election area breakdown and that's in this area here. So um, the nice thing about this is that as usual we can uh, maximize our, our maps and actually see things really quite close. We can zoom in and zoom out. And one of the reasons why oh, this is grayed out, it's not really grayed out, we've actually just decided that um, for this particular fictional election, some areas will be what we call mixed results, where um, no one party won outright. Uh, this is particularly useful to show um, where you have more than one election seat that's up for grabs and where there's no real clear balance of power. Right, so this is the radar chart, and this is Nottingham again. I'll just zoom out for you. And um, this radar chart is representing all of the indicators that are in that would normally be held in the, underneath this uh, data explorer. All these indicators are being represented around the radar chart. And um, because of the different values that all of these indicators have, it can go as low as negative 30 or as high as 30. So that's what the radar chart is actually representing is all that value. So on each spoke, of this particular chart, we have where that sits, where that value sits for that indicator for this geographic area. And that, in a nutshell, is the power of the radar chart. It's also known as a spider chart, or spider plot, or star plot. Um, we call it the radar chart because it really quite looks like that to us um, with, with how the chart appears. So with this, for example, let's zoom in. This is Birkeland's, and this is real data. Um, and we can see that 13% um, of people with no qualifications in 2001 are, uh, are represented in Birkeland's, or the Birkeland's has 13%. And 11% um, are also households with no cars or vans. 7% are claiming capacity benefits. And also 7% are, are claiming for pension credit. So you can see already that you can start comparing across the board and you can get a nice holistic view. It's quite good for social indicators. It's quite good for qualitative results because you can look at this and you can get a quick snapshot very fast. The other nice thing about the radar chart is that you can very simply mouse over a different area and see how that compares. And at that point, you don't really even need to know exactly what the numbers are. It's more about looking at how that shape is changing in the radar chart. It's quite a visual tool. Um, and as usual, again, you can just maximize, and it makes it so much easier to see as well. It makes for a really nice printout um, for information, for fast snapshot views of what's going on. It's quite useful for things for scoring. Um, it's got quite a lot of potential for use in uh, schools when you're trying to see how students have um, achieved uh, learning across say eight disciplines you want to see how they're doing um, and you can compare that then across a geographic region. This is a US example this is Louisiana and again this is real data. 
So we can see that the it's quite different. There's not as many indicators that we've got represented here, but it's also that as a result, our our polygon that gets drawn in the middle of here uh, changes quite radically, um, but still very very nice. So um, you can set the radar chart to handle and show you more than one. And as you, oops, sorry, let's try that again. As you select different areas, you can see here that the different polygon colors are being shown here at the bottom. So we've got Ascension, Allen, Rapids, and Natchitoches. So if I maximize this and have a look, I can see the differences across the board for population of a race, the percentage that are in uh, rural units that are inside the urban clusters, um, and the different over here we've got different populations in terms of their race. So it's really quite an interesting tool to, to compare um, lots of different types of data all at once um, and to do it in a way that is frankly really quite pretty um, and really quite visually arresting. It makes people kind of take a look because they want to understand what's going on. Um, so that's about it uh, for this time, and uh, if you'll just have a look at our website at www.instantatlas.com, you can see all of these and lots more examples of our software um, in the different development pages. Thank you.